Today, I'd like to share with you from a favorite poet of mine, W.H. Auden, British-born American poet, though, Pulitzer Prize-winning poet, that is. Uh, this is called, For the Time Being, a Christmas Oratorio. Well, so that is that. Now we must dismantle the tree, putting the decorations back into their cardboard boxes. Some have got broken and carrying them up to the attic. The holly and the mistletoe must be taken down and burnt, and the children get ready for school. There are enough leftovers to do, warmed up for the rest of the week. Not that we have much appetite, having drunk such a lot, stayed up late, attempted, quite unsuccessfully, to love all of our relatives, and in general, grossly overestimating our powers. Once again, as in previous years, we have seen the actual vision and failed to do more than entertain. It is an agreeable possibility, once again, that we have sent him away, begging though to remain his disobedient servant, the promised child who cannot keep his word for long. The Christmas feast is already a fading memory, and already the mind begins to be vaguely aware of an unpleasant whiff of apprehension at the thought of Lent and Good Friday, which cannot, after all, now be very far off. But for the time being, here we all are, back in the modern Aristotelian city of Darning and the 815, where Euclid's geometry and Newton's mechanics would account for our experience. And the kitchen table exists because I scrub it. It seems to have shrunk during the holidays. The streets are much narrower than we remembered. We had forgotten. The office was depressed as this. To those who have seen the child, however dimly, however incredulously, for the innocent children who whispered so excitedly outside the locked door where they knew the presence to be, grew up when it opened. Now, recollecting that moment, we can repress the joy, but the guilt remains conscious. Remembering the stable, for once in our lives, everything became new and nothing was not it. And craving this sensation, but ignoring the cause, we look around for something, no matter what, to inhibit our self-reflection and the obvious thing for that purpose would be some great suffering. So once we have met the Son, we are tempted ever after to pray to the Father. Lead us into temptation and evil for our sake. They will come all right. Don't worry, probably in a form that we do not expect and certainly with a force more dreadful than we can imagine. In the meantime, there are bills to be paid, machines to keep in repair, the regular verbs to learn, the time being to redeem from insignificance. The happy morning is over, the night of agony still to come, the time is new. When the spirit must practice his scales of rejoicing without even a hostile audience, and the soul endure a silence that is neither for nor against her faith, that God's will be done, that in spite of her prayers, God will cheat no one not even the world of its triumph. We'll talk soon.